So is this the world's deadliest disease? I think if you think about it in terms of the number of species that have been impacted, you can clearly argue for yes. So in 2004, when I was a fresh new grad student, I was down in Panama for my first field trip. A lot of the times we're camping in the field, hiking with backpacks on, when we noticed that the subjects of my research, the Panamanian golden frogs, were starting to go missing from sites where they'd been found for many years previous. You probably think about fungi mostly as things like mushrooms that you know we eat and we can see the fruiting bodies above the ground, but there's a whole bunch of fungi that live in the soil that are, you know, microscopic. And this particular genus of fungus can move through water. So they have a little flagellum and they use it to kind of propel themselves through the water. And that's how they find new hosts. So the, the pathogen is called Vitrachochytrium dendrobatidis. That's its scientific name. But we call the disease that it causes chytridiomycosis. Amphibians have a special skin, so they do a lot of their um, gas exchange, so breathing through their skin. And when this fungus insists in the skin, the skin thickens and they can't do that as well anymore. That causes cardiac arrest. Some of the species that stood to be wiped out completely by this pathogen were taken into captivity to so start captive breeding in the hopes that, you know, if it did wipe out the whole rest of them, we'd have something that we could eventually put back, hopefully someday. Here at the Vancouver Aquarium, uh, we work with two locally endangered amphibian species, for the Oregon spotted frog and the northern leopard frog, for assurance populations and for breeding and releasing to supplement their endangered wild numbers. We also participate with the Panamanian golden frog, SSP. We're not breeding and releasing Panamanian golden frogs, but we are breeding them to keep an assurance population. They're just such an iconic species as well that to think of never seeing them again, like they're gone from history, is just, it's too tragic. Unfortunately, in some places in, in Panama and other parts of the world where we've seen this disease go through, we have the ability to you know, measure what is the impact of com almost nearly complete loss of amphibian communities in these sites. It seems like every time we go back now, we're finding a few more individuals of a few more species in these communities that were sort of well documented before the decline. We're starting to see the numbers of species ticking back up and that's a really hopeful scenario. It's something that five years ago we didn't think was even possible.